The United States Post Office was founded during the Revolutionary War. Have you heard of it? And it was established as a way for businesses and people to communicate without the interference of the British, who we weren't too keen on at the time. It wasn't put in place as a bonus feature to America or a cool money-making scheme, but to empower the people in the face of tyranny. Kind of seems weird that people in power want to get rid of it when you think about it from a historical perspective, you know? Any hoosers, back then the old P.O. was all the rage with the old timies and kinda sorta helped establish America. A thing one could argue wasn't the best idea and led to the suffering of countless not-white people, but still, we got the Grand Canyon and other junk, so that's pretty neat, I guess. The point here, though, is that it wasn't a partisan issue up until the early 1800s, when our very old and racist president's favorite other old and racist president, Andrew Jackson, used the postal system to withhold political material from his rivals, specifically abolitionist mailers which his postmaster general instructed southern postmasters to withhold unless specifically requested. What a novel idea to use the mail system to maintain a system of racism from the current president's favorite guy. Super coincidence there. Side note, isn't it weird that Trump and cohorts will claim to be the party of Lincoln and also claim that the southern strategy where the party switch doesn't exist, but also Andrew Jackson, a Democrat, is his favorite president? I don't know, kind of weird. Anyway, this Andrew Jackson politicizing and manipulating the post office so as to curb the movement to abolish slavery was intertwined with something called the spoils system, a practice created by Jackson where civil service jobs were awarded to the people who supported whatever party was in power. You know, cronyism. Totally not familiar are any of those words that I am saying, of course. Now, this wasn't the post office we know today, but rather the United States Post Office Department, a predecessor to the USPS and cabinet department that was paid for by the government to create before largely making a profit, not that it mattered if it made money. It was only until the postal strike of 1970, and our boy Richard Nixon, seen here in his official presidential portrait, did the United States Post Office Department turn into the United States Postal Service. This was via the Postal Reorganization Act of 1970, which transformed the department into a government-owned corporation expected to make a profit. A totally smart idea that certainly didn't create any future problems or weird misunderstandings about what the post office is. So while Jackson set up the wonders of abusing the mail, this was probably the most damning moment in the USPS history. This is that Jar Jar giving Palpatine emergency powers over the Senate and then everyone just clapping because I guess that's how they vote in Star Wars. It's not a great film. Anyway, let's watch the whole clip of that even though we don't actually need to. Misa propose that the Senate give immediately emergency powers to the Supreme Chancellor. nonsense. So going into 2006, just a year after a young Darth Vader shouted, but from my point of view, the Jedi are evil, and we were in a situation where the post office, now recognized as a corporation for some reason, was naturally on a decline, but still extremely important. And instead of creating a way to keep it afloat during the age of electro -Ms, the Postal Accountability and Enhancement Act served as a way to step even harder on the post office's neck specifically by requiring the Postal Service to prepay retiree health benefits, the cost of which adding up to roughly $5 billion a year. Now, to be clear, this is something that no other federal agency is required to do, and by 2012 caused the USPS to begin defaulting on the payments, the grand total of which has grown to $47.2 billion. In their fact sheet about this, the USPS specifically pointed to the 2006 law as the reason their current business model had become unsustainable. In other words, 
we f***ing loan sharked them. Instead of giving the post office a bailout, something we have no problem doing with other entities, we put them in so much debt that they can never get out from under it. And now we're literally removing mailboxes from cities like we're Tony f***ing Soprano strip mining an insolvent business. But it's not Robert Patrick's canoe shop, it's the goddamn post office. And you should be very angry about this. In a country where we declared predatory ass banks as being too big to fail, the GOP can't muster even a fraction of the same passion for one of the most essential services this country has to offer. America is diseased. F*** it. Wow, what a clip that was from the, uh, the show. Uh, thanks for watching, and make sure to subscribe to this channel as well as our other channel where the uh, full episodes are. It's called Some More News. This is called Some Some More News Clips, which you know because you just watched it. Anyway...